Hello everyone, welcome to Icarus Broadbottom's World of Typing Weekly, Episode 4. Let's begin. Episode 4. We're nearing the final stretch, folks. Buckle your seatbelts. Let's skip the recap this time. Just kidding. Okay. Alright, let's see. The first thing I've typed in this episode, am I going to do well? Or am I going to mess it up on the second word like I seem to always do? Let's see. Last time on Icarus Proud Bones World of Typing Weekly. Oh, okay. Yep, it's all ruined. With the, oh, Mark 22, with the help of the uh, mysterious Spectre, was able to reboot. After being attacked by Kelso, Apollo, Jerry, and Lucida shared their stories. Wrote a eulogy for Icarus and pledged to find Kelso. Eh, that wasn't so bad. Flawless cop, that was not flawless. So you have no recollection of how you were rebooted? Nope. None. It's very strange. After a hard shutdown, it should be impossible for me to reboot myself. Someone, or something, must have assisted. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back. Thanks. It feels good to be back. We searched all over for that Kelso dude, but couldn't find him. He's a really good hider, or something. Ah, yes. Kelso must be found. But there's one other thing we need to do first. There's an essential task that has been neglected. Jerry, can you guess what I'm talking about? Yes, I think I know of what you speak. Let's have the player spell it out. <laughs> Literally. We haven't had the opportunity to examine Icarus's body yet. That is very true. <clears throat> yep. I would have done it earlier, but I was... Oh yeah, laying unconscious upstairs. Jerry, can you lead the way? And I'd like Lucida and Apollo to come with us as well. It's like a little field trip. Yes, follow me. <laughs> hey, nice decor. <laughs> I was just laughing with the fact there's a freaking keyboard on top of his casket. It's pretty impressive how each of these rooms has its own thing going on. Anyways, enough wasted time. I shall now open the casket. I'm not sure if I want to be here for this. Me too. Why do we have to be here to see this? Please, try to relax. I have a suspicion that what you see will not be traumatic. Jerry, do you want to do the honors? Okay, here I go. I knew he wouldn't be in there. Yes, just as I suspected. Empty. And yet another clue. Look within your heart. Wow, this one is totally corny. Clues. Clues everywhere. Anyways, let's all have a talk. Jerry, didn't you say that you were the one who moved body? From the crime scene? Yes, it was I who moved the body. Kind of a big load for an owl to carry, isn't it? As you may already know, I'm an ancient American Indian spirit animal. Therefore, I'm imbued with some handy magics. The strength to carry large objects whilst flying is one of them. Okay, let's say you did carry the body down here. The question remains. 
player. Spell it out for Jerry. Okay then, Jerry. Where the heck is a body of Icarus Proudbottom? I know not where the body has gone. Lucida, Apollo, you were in this building when Icarus was murdered, correct? Yep. Yes. Then please, clarify for me. What did you see Jerry do with the body of Icarus Proudbottom? Specifically. After discovering the body, Apollo and I went back to the main typing room. We didn't want to stay in the room with the body. That's gross. We saw Jerry come out with the body, as he described, and bring it into the basement. Yes, I saw this as well. Jerry's not lying about this one. It's quite a sight, an owl carrying a dead body. So, Jerry did bring the body down here. According to my computations, there are only two possibilities. First possibility. Someone or something has moved the body. The only other possibility is that the body moved itself. That would mean... Oh, ye gods! Hey, that's my line. Mark 22. You make it sound like you've suspected this along. Wait. Like you've suspected this al I think that's supposed to say all along. You make it sound like you've suspected this all along. How did you know? It came to me. In a vision. Player, can you please ask Jerry one more question? Jerry, what are you? How would you describe yourself? Oh my god. Let me try that again. How would you describe yourself? There we go. I don't understand. We all know this already. I'm an owl, an ancient American Indian spirit animal. I've said this like a hundred times. That's it? An owl? Jerry, there are 216 species of owls. Look it up. Are you really content describing yourself as just an owl? What species of owl are you? Specifically. I see. I'm a northern pygmy owl. <gasps> pygmy. Just as I thought. Honestly, I'm kind of filled with shame that I didn't make the connection earlier. I'm gonna say a phrase to you all. Tell me if it rings any bells. Trust not the pygmy. Well? Trust not the pygmy? No, not ringing any bells. Is it a catchphrase or something? Kids these days. Nope, I don't understand the question. What the heck are you talking about? Someone wrote that phrase in the storage room. It was a clue intended for me to find. So, the question is obvious. Who wrote the clue on the storage room wall? Was it Kelso? I'm not positive, but it's... There's another mistake, I think, but it's a positively a possibility. <laughs> I think it's meant to say it's positively a possibility. Anyways, Jerry, that leads me to one more question. If Kelso wrote, trust not the pygmy, then do you know why Kelso might think you should not be trusted? Damned if I know. Kelso's kind of a weirdo. 
You know, IT guys. Yes, I assumed you would not surrender the answer. It seems the only way to reach the truth is through Kelso. So let's find him. Let's first check the storage closet. Whoa. Mark, Mark 22, can you hear me? Ah, this again. What's this all about, anyways? Ah, good. You're back online. So my fix worked. I now understand that you have no idea what's truly going on here. So I'm going to explain things in simple terms, as, you've, as if you were a baby, or an idiot. Which you kind of are if you seriously buy this crap. Ha! <laughs> Burn! This guy. Okay, I'm going to demystify this entire thing now, so pay careful attention. I gotta do this quickly, there's no time. What did you just say? <gasps> what? I said there's no time, which there isn't. So stop wasting time with weird questions, you dolt. Just look how much time I've wasted already answering this one question. Oh great, so much time has been wasted that the connection is deteriorating. Now I won't have time to explain the myriad mysteries that abound. Whoa, that line was awesome. Myriad mysteries that abound. Find Kelso. His mind has not been affected. He's the only one who sees things as they are. Maybe he can help you get everyone back to the ship. Wait, the ship? What? Okay, connection's dying. I only have time to say three more words. Poop butts. Lol. You okay there, Mark-22? You zonked out for a minute there. Uh, I'm fine, thanks. Someone has been communicating with me via direct radio wave. Not exactly sure who, though. Some ghostly weirdo. Anyways, let's head out. <laughs> Classic. What's so funny? There's nobody here. Jerry, another quick question. Oh my god. Let's try that again. There we go. Can you sp... Oh, can... Wow. Okay, there we go. Can you specifically describe Kelso? What does he look like? I suppose I should have mentioned this before. He's a smegmarian. <laughs> smegmarian. <laughs> okay. Kind of a green slug looking guy. Approximately human sized. This warrants a follow up. Do smegmarians have any notable abilities that we should know about? Hmm. Nothing I know about. Why? He's just kind of wet and gross. I'm not sure how notable that is. Especially since he's an IT guy. Then there's something you don't know about Smegmarians. Something you can't see with your lame organic eyes. I, with my amazing robot vision, can see more. I see you there, Kelso. Don't be a doofus. Come out. <laughs> Hello. Okay, okay, enough. You win. Yeesh. Holy moly, talk about persistence. What's a guy gotta do to get some privacy around here? Kelso, I never knew you could do camouflage. Well, I never told you, because I hate doing it. You think this is easy? You think it's easy to change your freaking skin color? Imagine holding in a massive, massive poop. Like arm-sized, and you had Indian food the night before. And you just wolfed down a big mug of strong coffee. That's what it feels like to maintain a skin pattern. Anyways, I suppose you're going to want to question me now. Shall we? Sure, let's do it. 
Apollo, Lucida, and Jerry. I'm going to lock you in here while I question Kelso. No offense intended. I just need a guarantee that we'll be undisturbed. I can't keep having people scamper about whenever I turn my back. If you must. This is garbage. The decision is yours to make. Okay, Kelso. <laughs> I said, okay, Kelso, and then he actually said, okay, Kelso. Okay, Kelso. It's just the three of us. You, me, and the truth. Nice line. Let's get right to it. I'm going to ask you some questions. Please answer them as concisely as possible. Okay, Kelso. Did you kill Icarus? Why do I always mess that up? I almost always mess up his name there. Did you kill Icarus? Proud bottom. Wow. You're wasting no time at all. Anyways, no. No, I did not. Sorry. That's the truth. <laughs> I hope you didn't think it would be as, as simple as that. No. This is exactly what I expected. Let's get more specific then. From the tech center, did you see whatever happened to Icarus? Let me try not to mess this up. Proud bottom. There we go. There you go. Yes. Yes, I saw exactly what happened. I saw everything. Aha! Good. We're finally getting somewhere. Before we delve into the chain of events, let's go one step further. Were you directly involved in the supposed murder of Icarus? There, I messed it up again in the same spot. Proud bottom. Yes. Yes, I was. Although I couldn't help but notice the inclusion of one word in that question. A very deliberate inclusion, I can assume. I think he's talking about the supposed murder. Oh yes, my green friend. As deliberate as inclusions get. Well, enough mystery. Let's tear back the curtain, right now. Can you describe to me exactly what happened to Icarus? Proud bottom. Why not? This has gone on long enough, right? <sighs> okay. It all began with the talk between Icarus, Jerry, and I. Icarus was extremely upset by a recent turn of events. Because he was at risk of losing his typing license? Well, yeah. But that's only half of it. He had a secret, much larger, much more serious, that he wanted to protect. Okay, Kelso. And... What exactly was... his secret? Well, you know he was under investigation by the Typing Council. Well, they were close to uncovering something about him. Something big. Something only Jerry and I know. If they had continued their investigation, they would have found out that... Oh no, what the hell just happened? <gasps> He's been shot! <gasps> oh great. A friggin' tranquilizer dart right in the chest. I suppose I'm gonna pass out any second now. <sighs> Jeez. I took this job because it seemed easy and low stress. The job description didn't say, Murder and tranquilizer darts in the chest. Quit talking, you doof, and tell me Icarus's secret, quick. Nah, too late. Already losing consciousness. I probably shouldn't have told you anyways. Anyways, here I go. Passing out now. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. He passed out. Okay then. I'll have to figure out the rest of this without him. Let's see what everyone else has to say about this.
Hi again. Did you guys see the lights go out just now? The lights? In here? No. Nope, it's been kind of boring in here. Most interesting. Wait, the lights went out again? They sure did. Anyways, I've got some good news. I suspect that this case is nearly cracked. Anyways, please hang tight for just a few more minutes. I'll be back with something you'll all find interesting. Well, this has been quite the roller coaster, has it not? Well, actually, I guess not. All we've really done is walk around like four rooms. Anyways, before I crack this case like a freaking nut, I should write down my findings. Just in case I somehow got shut down again and lose my progress. To the typewriter. Alright. Icarus Proud Bottom Case Update. This will most likely be my final update. Jerry, Lucida, Apollo, and and even Kelso are most likely innocent of the crime. I suspect there is still one person in this facility that I have not yet found. He has been hiding skillfully this entire time and I now believe I know his hiding place my next step is to confront this individual and learn the truth oh my god there we go about all that has transpired in this place Okay, so many questions. But one seems especially relevant right now. Who shot Kelso with that dart? In theory, Kelso could have used it on himself. However, I doubt that that is the case. Why would he knock himself out after revealing that Icarus had a secret? Whoever used the dart didn't want Icarus's secret to be revealed. I think I now know who that person is and where he is hiding. Let's go. So many clues have been unearthed. But one comes to mind right now. I think I understand now. I've scoured this place. Every room. But there's one place I haven't looked. Inside your hearts. <laughs> Literally inside my heart. <laughs> what the hell? I didn't think the UI would become a part of this game. Hello in there. I don't believe we've met. I'm Special Agent Mark 22. I'm a Class A Justice Bot sent by the BTI, Bureau of Typing Investigations. And you? Proudbottom. My name is Icarus Proudbottom. <laughs> so he's not dead. Or there's another Icarus Proud Bottom? I did obviously suspect from very early on that he wasn't actually dead. Kind of reinforced by the fact that his body wasn't actually in the casket. <laughs> so has he been hiding in my hearts? How did he get inside of my hearts? I didn't realize it was so easy to get in there. Is it just a matter of taking off a couple screws? Hmm. Now I wonder what else might be hiding behind my other UI elements. Hmm. Alright, well, I hope you've enjoyed Icarus Proud Bottoms World of Typing Weekly Episode 4. And I will be back soon for the fifth, and I believe the fifth and next episode is the final episode. So, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.